Welcome to Talking Hope, breakthrough conversations about preventing, treating, and curing cancer. Brought to you by City of Hope, an NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. Hope lives here in Orange County. Hi, I'm Darren Godden, and this is Talking Hope. My guest today is Dr. Jason Salsamendi. Dr. Salsamendi is the lead interventional radiologist for City of Hope Orange County Lennar Foundation Cancer Center. Uh, Dr. Salsamendi, it's such a pleasure to have you on the podcast today. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you so much, Darren, for having me join your podcast today. It's so, Dr. Salsamendi, uh, I'd love to chat today as as we as we discuss um, interventional radiology. I'd love to know what sort of difference it makes for patients and really how it, it um, impacts patients who have cancer. So can you start by first telling us really what is interventional radiology and um, what are its benefits for patients? Great, I'm glad you asked because that's one of the most common questions that we encounter. What is this IR field, interventional radiology? Uh, because we're not quite a radiologist and we're not quite a surgeon and we're kind of a mixture of multiple different specialties. But like the true essence is that uh, we're like image guided um, interventionalists and clinicians. We provide almost surgical like procedures without stitches or incisions. And we're able to do that by means of using really precise imaging. So we're hmm. trained in radiology, but we have additional training to apply what we know in radiology to the actual, actual interventions um, from opening up vessels to closing vessels that are bleeding to tackling tumors um, and many different things in between. It's the same common thread of like an image guidance using radiologic tools to be able to, uh, you know, be able to accurately perform those particular procedures. So are you talking about like x-rays and MRI or, or what type of imaging? Yeah, it could be any of the diagnostic imaging we traditionally think of, but commonly it's gonna be something called fluoroscopy, which is a type of X-ray uh, that over the years has basically improved to the point that we call it like the angio suite. And we think of that with cardiology, with vascular surgery, with interventional radiology, where we have real-time imaging guidance of our catheters and guide wires and other tools that we use but with this type of particular X-ray. And then we have CT and ultrasound and MRI that not as much with MRI, with real-time imaging, but that's also um, a tool. But the workhorse is really CT and ultrasound outside of the x-ray. And how does this benefit the patient? Uh, well, it has tremendous benefits. Uh, one of them is just taking procedures that have been traditionally considered difficult for patients. And here at this cancer center, one of those may be bone marrow biopsy. They may not really be looking forward to a bone marrow biopsy from the traditional approach that maybe they've had in the past, uh, where it's performed using kind of landmarks and, you know, by the textbook guidance. Uh, we can convert that to an interventional radiology procedure where we basically take a CT scan of the bone marrow space. And just like GPS, we can know where we're entering at the skin to where we're entering into the bone marrow space. And we can be able to anesthetize, numb that whole area really, really well. And then with some little sedation, enter the bone marrow space almost like completely at, at ease with the patient as opposed to other experiences may, may not have been so comfortable. So that's one way we use that imaging Great. as an example. The other kind of avenues are basically offering procedures that had not been available before. Um, certain types of treatment of tumors, maybe in the liver or kidney that previously may have required uh, open surgery or some modification of that now can be performed with just basically needle guidance, no stitches, no incision, and just advancing uh, one or two or multiple needles to be able to bracket these tumors and then apply a heat or a cold to be able to destroy the tumor cells. And that can be done as an outpatient, which is great for the, the whole recovery process. And as you can imagine, there could be other things going on with these patients where just having less of a recovery process from these procedures really makes a big difference. Wow. So, so saving them time, um, <laughs> certainly saving them. Uh, you're not just on an exploratory um, 
uh, <laughs> thing you're doing. I mean, you, you definitely yeah. can see what you're doing and you can get in, get out. I mean, that's, that's, um, it sounds, it's a very interesting field. I mean, that's, that sounds like it requires a lot of different types of skills as well. So what, what kind of drove your passion for this field? I, yeah, this field actually, when I basically was exposed to it, because it was more like being exposed and really seeking it out at the time. It wasn't uh, something that was like on most people's radar back in like the early 2000s. Um, you would maybe in your medical school rotation come across a clinical scenario where a patient goes to IR and then you get that exposure. And that's kind of like what happened with me. But in my particular case, it was neuro IR where they came in with a stroke and they needed emergent intervention. And I just saw the team that kind of click all together. And it was just like magic, you know, watching a patient that was like in a real stressful period of their life in the ER go upstairs. And like within about 45 minutes, like the problem was addressed and they were recovering neurologic function like right there so wow. uh, for me that was like uh, my eye opener and then i just saw various different examples of that uh, throughout my my schooling and training could you tell us more another story perhaps of a, a patient with cancer that has really been impacted in a positive way by ir oh yeah for sure there's uh, just and just so many different scenarios where I did a lot of my interventional oncology um, uh, practice in the past was in a transplant center. Uh, so we would have patients that um, are awaiting a liver transplant with a liver tumor. And it's a very anxious period of time. It could be a number of months to a number of years before they can get to qualify for their organ transplant. And during that period of time, they may have a couple of tumors that are kind of slowly growing so in those roles, we had patients that we were able to treat those liver tumors, keep them stable or shrink them down, hmm. or completely eradicate them and keep them on the transplant list. And then sometimes it's so successful that they have to debate, do I even want a transplant now? Because the tumor is gone. And then you have like this um, new unanticipated dilemma at times. So, you know, um, you seek with one thing and sometimes you, you get another um unanticipated uh, reward wow that's that's um okay. that's probably a good good decision to have to make uh, <laughs> yeah to know that that uh the ir treatment has been mm -hmm. so successful um tell us how how does ir uh what what role does ir play in the integrated approach to cancer care here at city of hope oh it's i i i mean not uh, have like any particular bias here but i feel like it's very central to the integrated <laughs> approach and uh, the reason i say that is that um we can't really treat something we can't see right so we're usually using radiology to be able to track our results of course there's other things that we track like tumor markers and things of that nature to be fair but a lot of it is image based doing pet cts mris and and uh, with interventional radiology, we can you know, provide some of the reads for those scans along with our diagnostic colleagues in radiology. We can also help answer questions like if there's an area that looks suspicious that maybe, unfortunately, a tumor may be growing back or maybe there's a different site. Is it really the same problem that was there a year ago or we have some other new issue coming? And then in mm -hmm. interventional radiology, we can target that, do maybe a percutaneous biopsy, like an outpatient procedure, sample that and be able to send it, figure out what we're dealing with. And, and then it just like escalates from there because we can then send us samples for multiple molecular targets and helps our oncology colleagues be able to like maybe change their medical management, their chemotherapy or immunotherapy or what have you. Um, and we can also work along our surgeons. Our surgeons uh, may have a patient that unfortunately may have issues where they can't go under anesthesia completely and that patient may benefit from having a procedure where we can just sedate them only and be able to maybe treat a kidney tumor or treat a liver tumor um, in a less invasive way, for instance. Uh, and then a lot of what we do um, kind of just goes in the background because we just do so much of it. Uh, one of them is most of our patients really get a lot of benefit from having a vascular port so they, they can be able to get blood draws and get their CT studies and most importantly, get their therapies through it. Mm -hmm. And we place those on a very frequent basis here. Um, and a whole bunch of other 
procedures um, that uh, we get involved in. When you, call, when you, when you talk about integrated, uh, one of them that's really important is making sure that throughout this whole process that the patient is as comfortable as possible. And if interventional radiology, we can target various nerves and plexi and be able to anesthetize and be able to help them if there's any discomfort in a certain area. We could also help drain fluid and be able to manage distension of the belly or difficulty breathing with various different means working alongside our pulmonology colleagues. So uh, uh, we definitely are in the mix with all the various specialists to try to see how we can fit in to help our patients. Wow, that's that's incredible. It sounds like you have um, <laughs> so many tools at your disposal to help patients yeah. in so many ways. That's um, very cool. Uh, what types of cancer-related needs or side effects is IR used for? Uh, cancer-related needs or side effects would kind of like this kind of break that down into multiple pieces. This is like a quite wide uh, canvas there. Uh, but going back to that integrated approach and working with our, our colleagues, and we have the curative box, like where we're able to like, for instance, a real clear cut would be like a two centimeter renal mass. We can freeze that, you know, offer a curative treatment. Hmm. Um, or we could have a patient that, um, for instance, has rapid progression of liver tumors and and if for whatever reason the systemic therapies aren't working, we can go into the liver arteries and provide a certain radiation therapy called Y90 to be able to work on those tumors in a very selective way where we're treating the liver and not having the side effects throughout the system by giving some of the systemic therapies. And then from some of those more advanced procedures, there's a whole host of like more simple procedures we do in ultrasound, like when patients are getting worked up and they're getting a PET CT from head to toe, they may find out they have a nodule in their thyroid that looks a little off and we can sample that and make sure that it's just a benign nodule. Or uh, they may find that they have like a little thing light up on one of their vertebral bodies or a little compression fracture. We can go in there and, and biopsy that and find out what's going on with CT guidance. And we can also use that extra we talked about and we can, if it's a fracture, we can stabilize it and put cement in the fracture plane and, and a balloon even to get a little bit extra height if it's a compressed fracture. Um, hmm. So um, it, it, one of the challenges is like, it's hard to be able to just label um, with just a one sound bite what interventional radiology does because we do um, quite um, often find ourselves in diverse uh, um, set of procedures. So I hope that kind of touched on your question, but it I, does, it does. And I, I, I'm wondering <laughs> some of these procedures you're talking about, are those all done in the same, you're, you're doing some sort of a, say a PET CT and, and then you do those procedures during that same period, or is that something that after they've had the CT, the patient has to come back again for a, another appointment with you, or is this all done kind of in, in, in real time as they're going through some of the imaging? Um, I think that the most, um, the, I, one of the greatest aims would be able to scan somebody, provide the biopsy, and do everything that's needed all in one setting. With that said, though, it may cut out that multidisciplinary integrated approach hmm. because perhaps that biopsy isn't necessary. After talking to the oncologist, it may not be so relevant. So being super expeditious definitely can have its great advantages. We all agree on that. But occasionally, it may have some downsides because it will cut out some of the teamwork, which is what this institution is so no, well known for. And we want to be able to make sure that um, we're doing the biopsy the right way. We're getting the right type of sample because it's not um, simply just removing tissue. It's also removing the area of the tumor that's suspicious. And that's putting in the right solution to get the right type of pathology exam done, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, it, with that said, usually they get their PET CT and their scans first. We reassess, talk to their referring oncologist or surgeon, uh, and then um, proceed from there. Gotcha. Okay. So let me ask you this question. We ask all of our guests on the podcast. Um, you work at City of Hope. We use the word hope a lot. What does hope mean to you, Dr. Salsamendi? Uh, well, 
I, I think that like it's kind of like the hope and faith kind of go together. So with hope, you can have faith and having faith really gets you through the storm, you know, and I think that uh, the vast majority of cases of, that we have patients here, the storm hits like a lightning strike and they just were never expecting to have this pop up. They had their all the things going on in their, their life and then this just came out of nowhere. So it leads to a lot of uncertainty for most people and anxiety and trying to make the right decision. So having an environment that like um, allows the, for hope to flourish and having faith and yeah, I, I think it's extremely positive environment. And that's one of the greatest assets here is that uh, patients really start to develop a strong faith that they're all our team, they're seeing all our team support them in various ways. And um, that gets them through that initial storm onto like a road to recovery. Mm, that's a, that's, mm -hmm. I, I, I like that combination of hope and faith, right? I mean, yeah. you have hope, but when you can also have faith that there's mm -hmm. a better tomorrow and there's an answer, there's a, um, there's something that can be done to help you. That's, that's, um, yeah. that's really reassuring. So um, before we go, um, I guess I'd, I'd love to know a little bit more about you and um, your family and um, you're living here in Orange County, I suppose. And um, tell us about, you know, what, 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 what you do outside of being a doctor. Oh, <laughs> uh, great question. Uh, well, I have two um, kids in middle school and uh, in high school. And uh, my wife and I moved here from the East Coast about four years ago, almost. And uh, what I do basically afterwards is I just cherish all the moments of the family, whatever mm -hmm. that may be, um, whether going to well, catch a movie or just a road trip or, or what have you, just uh, cherish every moment with them, you know, and, and then the other time is just making sure that they're doing their homework right. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Junior and high, high school students. Sure they go to bed tough. on time and they, you know, do all their things they need to do, you know. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Well, Dr. Salsamendi, thank you so much for bringing your your heart and your hands to City of Hope and um, lending um, your skills to mm -hmm. our patients and um, really developing that hope and that faith in others. Mm -hmm. uh, we appreciate you and we appreciate you for being on the uh, podcast today as well. So All right. Okay. thanks so much for being yeah. here. I'm Darren okay. Godden. This is Talking Hope, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on our next episode. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you all for listening to Talking Hope, where breakthrough conversations about preventing, treating, and curing cancer have been brought to you by City of Hope, an NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. This is the hope you've been waiting for. For more information, visit cityofhope.org forward slash OC, or make an appointment at any of City of Hope's five Orange County locations, including City of Hope Orange County Lenar Foundation Cancer Center, the most advanced cancer treatment center in Orange County. Call 888-333-4673. That's 888-333-HOPE.